Are public cloud providers bleeding some enterprises dry? Some think they are. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider, where we talk about the realities of cloud computing and how it works with your enterprise. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, B-list geek. Let's get to work. So this one's a bit hyperbolic, certainly as the title goes, but I think it's getting to uh, reality that uh, enterprises are seeing right now, and they're starting to complain about it. Uh, if I hear uh, one of my clients uh, you know, talk about cloud computing, they, uh, they always use the term, they're bleeding us dry. <laughs> so they they, they view them as spending more money uh, than they should be spending uh, for these cloud resources, and they view the cloud providers as having some culpability in the reason that's happening. So there's lots of diverse effects that are coming from this, and I think that enterprises are starting, and rightfully so, to ask the question in terms of what these enterprises can do to manage these cloud providers better, and also what the cloud providers can do uh, to provide uh, better cost benefit uh, to the enterprises. So let's get into what this is all about. So there's some bad impacts from this that enterprises are feeling right now as they're struggling uh, um, with the cloud costs that they feel are a little excessive. And the main thing would be financial strain, increase operational costs, place a significant strain on the enterprises, it impacts their profitability, impacts cash flow, and Ultimately, they're finding that as they're pushing resources to cloud providers into paying for services like storage and compute and databases, things like that, and as these get more expensive and they're pushing more and more cash toward cloud providers, that they don't have money to invest in other areas that they feel they need to invest, other critical areas, the ability to expand IT growth, training, things like that. So they view this as a resource suck from the core enterprise uh, money that it's able to spend. So the IT can IT group can't go off and spend it on other things that they feel uh, might be uh, be, uh, might be better utilized. Training, for example, obviously overhauling existing systems. Resource misallocation, excessive spending due to inefficient cloud management. Uh, can lead to resource misallocation. So they find themselves investing into in unnecessary cloud services or over-provisioning. Uh, in many instances, when I ask people why they resourced so many resources, compute, storage, databases, things like that, around a particular application use case, and they'll tell me that the cloud providers instructed them to do that. And so they needed lots of headroom uh, to make sure that they do not run into some sort of a scalability wall when they leverage this application. But in looking at it, it's something they're never going to use. And so they're over-provisioning, overspending on these cloud resources. And again, it diverts resources away from more strategic initiatives. Competitive disadvantages, obviously, as competitors optimize their cloud usage efficiently, enterprises that don't do this as efficiently or may use a cloud provider that doesn't provide them with the same amount of cash management, resource management, so they're not overspending, or going to find themselves at a competitive disadvantage. So in other words, if your competitors are leveraging cloud computing in a much more optimized way, uh, perhaps have a better provider than you do, then they're going to have a competitive advantage over you. They're spending fewer resources and getting more value out of it. So the inability to manage and optimize cloud costs can result in reduced market agility, slower response times. You know, ultimately, the market demands aren't being met. So there's lots of um, negative outcomes from this. Operational inefficiencies, high cloud expenses may force enterprises to cut back in other operational areas. Uh, you know, for example, this can affect service delivery, product quality, overall customer experiencing, and potentially damage the company's reputation. An example would be that uh, I had a client that was unable to spend as much as they needed to spend on bettering the customer experience on their web pre presence and uh, also their mobile application presence, and this affected their sales. And so they were spending so much money on just kind of keeping their cloud systems up and running for lots of reasons around inefficiency. In other words, they should not have been expending, spending as much money as they were, but it also removed 
investment into other areas that were direly needed to change. In this case, the ability to provide a better customer experience to gain more sales. And then finally, decision-making challenges. When unexpected costs arise, the enterprises are going to face difficulties in making strategic decisions, such as budgeting and forecasting, becomes because they're more complex and less predictable. Um, common complaint that I hear from my clients out there is I really can't predict my cloud bill from one month to another. It's very much like your electricity bill or your water bill. Obviously, it's based on consumption. You should have the ability to monitor your, monitor your consumption. Certainly, the FinOps tools allow you to do aspects of that. But for some reason, the way in which that the cloud providers have set up uh, the pricing and the terms, it's very difficult for them to predict and plan. And therefore, they end up spending a, uh, a, an amount of money that they can't determine. It's, less pre- it's not predictable. It's something that they can't put their finger on as to a resource they're going to spend every month. And so they're kind of waiting for the bill to show up. And that's how much they're allocating for cloud. It should be a lot more predictable than that. And obviously, someone's missing the case here. And in some cases, it could be the enterprise. In some cases, it could be the cloud provider. Many times, it's the cloud provider. So again, we have the concept of shared responsibility here, and this is kind of no different. So while we're kind of blaming the cloud providers here, and rightfully so, I think they're making some core mistakes. They could do uh, much better at providing their services to provide more efficient use of resources for their customers, people who are consuming the cloud services. This really exists on both sides. In other words, enterprises have to be wary and manage their cloud providers effectively, and the cloud providers, I think, need to do a good job in providing tools and guidance on how these resources are managed effectively. And so there may be fault uh, fault to be uh, had on both sides, on the people who are on the enterprises that are consuming the cloud resources and the cloud providers that are producing the cloud resources. So I'm not taking anybody off the hook. However, this seems to come down over and over again Uh, in terms of enterprises being confused in the messaging that they're getting and the guidance they're getting from their cloud providers uh, and not necessarily understanding how to manage their cost effectively and therefore overusing resources or not using resources in effective ways. And the cloud providers are not providing the tools and the approaches and the training that I think the enterprises need to leverage the cloud providers in more cost-effective ways. And obviously some of you are saying, well, I I understand why they're not doing that. It's in their best interest Uh, to uh, set things up so their customers are going to waste more money because obviously they make more money the more their customers waste. I don't think that's going to lead to a good outcome. I think the customers are going to get frustrated with the cloud provider uh, if they're unable to get the cost predictability and get the cost spend, the cost burn, the bleeding under control. uh, They're going to end up moving on to another provider or perhaps even moving completely off the cloud altogether. And we have many uh, videos out here on this channel about people Uh, in case studies, in repatriation, as enterprises in some instances are moving off of cloud providers. And in many cases, the reason they're moving off the cloud providers is because they're much less cost effective than they thought they would be. So it's a money reason. And this is what we're talking about here. They're, in essence, bleeding these enterprises to death, and they're not going to take it anymore. And they make a strategic move to uh, either downsize the utilization of a public cloud provider, move completely off that public, or move completely off that public cloud provider altogether. I understand why they're doing it. So, what are the cloud providers doing wrong? Well, I've identified five things that I see uh, as as common areas where they can improve. In other words, common things that they're doing not so well that they should be doing better uh, to pass more. Uh, cost efficiency down to the customers who are using these systems. So the first would be complex pricing models. Um, The pricing structures that these cloud providers provide are difficult for enterprises to predict accurately. So as what we talked about a few minutes ago is that my clients are saying, I I can't predict my bills from uh, month to month. And obviously, there's a whole discipline called FinOps and how to put some governance and put some observability around uh, how you're spending these monies, these this money, but in some instances, the pricing models and the terms and how they bill are so complex, it's still very difficult for them to predict what their bill is going to be. So this unpredictability just kind of means that they're going to allocate this expense, and again, they're not going to use that resources resource that money for other purposes that could be more strategically important to the business. Next would be over provisioning and underutilization. Um, 
And I get this all the time uh, from my clients. So in many cases, cloud providers are encouraging their customers to purchase more resources than needed. And this results in paying for unused capacity, increasing overall costs, and again, with not adding value. And so cloud providers may recommend that you go with a certain configuration, which is going to leave you some headroom. That's the word they use uh, in terms of over-provisioning compute, over-provisioning uh, platform size, over-provisioning storage systems, because you have some place to go. So in other words, as you scale up, you don't have to go back and provision more resources. Uh, they're already there for you. Or they may even set up some auto-scaling capabilities. We'll talk, that, talk about that in a minute, uh, which can be much less cost-effective. You need to understand what your application is doing, provision the uh, number of resources that that application is going to need, and figure out how that's going to grow over time. This can't be guesswork, and this can't be throwing money at the issue as some sort of a, a very expensive insurance policy that you're not going to run out of resources. Resources You have to put some architectures, put some planning into this, but also I think that the cloud providers need to do a much better job at training their customers in how to allocate just the number of resources that they need without over-allocating and overspending. Inadequate cost management tools, insufficient or overly complex cost management tools, are, are, are a detriment to the enterprise right now. Now, we have a bunch of third-party tools that are out there, so only the whole FinOps thing and uh, cost governance and you know all these things that are kind of moving into the world. But most enterprises that are leveraging a public cloud service, they perhaps can't afford uh, to have FinOps there. They can't afford the third-party tools. And so they're leveraging the native tools that the cloud providers are providing. And in many cases... These tools are overly complex. Uh, they do not allow for the optimization of, of these systems. They do not provide the data that they need. They do, they do not have, in some instances, direct control over allocating and deallocating resources or providing real-time monitoring of these resources. So they become less than useful uh, and therefore lead to uh, under-optimization of, of cloud resources by over-provisioning and, of course, in most cases, overspending. And this is a big one, automatic scaling without proper guidelines. So cloud providers are great. And the reason we use cloud, because they have the elasticity, the ability to scale up to uh, any number of resources that we need to solve whatever problems we're looking to solve. That's awesome. And that's why we want to use cloud. However, some of these automated scaling features that they offer, in other words, you're able to turn on auto scaling. So as it needs additional memory or it needs additional processing power, it needs additional storage, it can automatically provision those for you dynamically on demand and while the application is running. So while these are very useful and very impressive, certainly a unique feature of cloud computing, they increase cost dramatically if not properly managed or configured. And so I always tell people to beware of auto scalability. Now, there's, everybody turns it on because it's kind of a cool resource to do. It is going to be built in insurance that you're not going to under provision and run into a... Uh, a resource wall where you don't have enough memory, don't have enough processor power, don't have enough storage to support the particular application workload you're doing, and therefore your application slows down or you know stops running and it has to be corrected, and so your business will shut down for some time. So the first thing that businesses think about is let me turn on auto scaling or let me over provision those resources to get the additional headroom, and that's just a complete cash suck. You're wasting lots of money on value you'll never get back from, from uh, allocating those resources. And again, I think the cloud providers need to do a much better job at working with their clients on how that's done effectively. Uh, so, you know, consultants like myself and SMEs like myself shouldn't be running all over the country teaching people how to do that for their particular platform. I think the platform providers under themselves should take on that responsibility. Then finally, lack of transparency in service offerings. Ambiguity in service offerings and the corresponding uh, charges uh, can cause billing surprises when enterprises use services without understanding the full, full cost issues, co full cost implications that, that come out of this. And an example would be utilization of serverless systems, container-based systems, utilization of microservice-based systems that they're encouraged to build and encouraged to use because we view those architectures as having a very positive impact on how an application runs and how it functions. However, there's little regard in terms of how many resources that those types of things will consume, those types of architectures will consume, 
and they end up getting uh, surprised uh, at the, the, the big bill they get at, at the end of the month when these very sophisticated applications are running. The, the biggest case for that, and we talked about that here on this, this, uh, this channel, is microservices. In other words, people ran like crazy to build things using uh, containers and microservices, and it's a great way to deploy application. Its deployment model into itself has lots of advantages in how you want to leverage it. But efficient use of resources in many instances, not all instances, by the way, is always going to be an outcome of that. And unless you understand exactly what you're doing, you're going to end up finding that um, the transparency of the offer in terms of how much uh, resources these things will actually consume is going to be a bit of a surprise. Serverless technology, same sort of thing. So some of these specialized technology offerings they have out there and these advanced architectures like microservices and container-based systems and uh, you know distributed, uh, uh, distributed containers, Kubernetes, things like that, they come with some advantages in terms of architectural scalability and flexibility, things like that. That's where we use them. But they can also come with a tremendous amount of costs that need to be put into these systems for, the, for you to get the value back out of them. So in many cases, people are taking microservices based, microservice based systems, and we saw a big uh, streaming provider do this a few years ago, convert them back uh, into a monolithic kind of architecture, runs just the same, runs just fine, uses 70% less resources. So there has to be transparency in how we're using these resources. We need to be taught, and I think the public cloud providers need to teach their clients on the impact of leveraging them and understanding the trade-offs. So, while it's very good to understand how to build container-based systems and microservice-based systems and the reason we want to do that and you know all the advantages and, and certainly the architectural elegance of making these things happen, in many cases, they're damn expensive. You need to understand they're going to be damn expensive. And I think in many instances, customers don't, their cloud customers don't understand that. And they need, I think cloud providers need to do a better job in teaching them that, we need to have better monitoring tools. We need to have better guidance on how we're building these systems. So they go into these things with their eyes open. They know that if I'm leveraging these architectures, they're going to have certain architectural advantages. That's why we build them. But they may come at a cost that is going to be surprising to the enterprise. And therefore, if we're paying that cost, we can't build as many applications. We can't use as many services. We can't push it into other areas to solve other problems like security and governance and things like that. And revamping the data, you know, all these things around the short list that, that uh, enterprises need to do because we're paying a cloud provider to leverage resources to drive an application that is just leveraging resources in a very inefficient ways. And we kind of have to stop doing that. And it truly is bleeding us dry. So hey, down in the comments, let me know uh, areas where you think that uh, public cloud providers are bleeding you dry. I'd love to see your case studies and what's working and what's not working for you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my other uh, resources out there, certainly the InfoWorld blog. Also, my uh, courses out on LinkedIn Learning, adding some new stuff every day. Also, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. My book, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. And uh, follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on X. I'd uh, love to hear what you guys are saying and please interact with me and let me know what you want to see on this channel. I'm happy to oblige. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers. Bye.